and welcome to a truly demented edition of Ben's Junk. So right out of the gate, I am going to blame V Westlife for this one. So he did a video, I think about three months ago now, on the Archer multiple video distribution system, and specifically the original model. Now, uh, Archer Radio Shack carried on the part number, if you will, to all the subsequent versions, but the original wave was deemed illegal, I guess you could say, by the FCC in 1987, although I, I don't quite follow their logic. But anyway, yeah, once upon a time you could go to Radio Shack and buy one of these suckers for $49.95. But uh, the whole thesis of V West Li- v Westlife's video, <laughs> I'm doing great, uh, was that it, you were broadcasting on forbidden frequencies, and those would be the original uh, allocations for channels 70 through 83 analog. And sometime in the 80s, those got moved around. So you may own a TV more recent that, oh, I can hit channel 77 or something. Well, that is tuning to different frequencies. So you have to have an old enough piece of gear to get you there. Now, none of my TVs are quite that old, but I do have other video gear with tuners that are that old. So that was my uh, basis for testing, I guess you could say. But anyway, uh, getting back to V Westlife, his video kind of awakened the lame hacker in me. And I just thought it would be kind of a a funny little parlor trick to broadcast my little TV station, if you will, KLAK, on one of those forbidden channels. And uh, as it turned out, boy, it's a toughie, and it's you're you're cheating the whole way. But I was able to pull it off, and this is actually the last thing I'm shooting for this particular video. I should note that. Um, normally I do the Ben's Junks in order, but normally I do a dry run, then I shoot the video again in order. But I was so frustrated trying to get something workable that when I finally did, I just grabbed the camcorder and shot. And it was at the end of a very long day. You can hear that I'm just completely ground down and my voice is, even by my crappy standards, starting to fail. So... Uh, Yeah, it just kind of is what it is. So anyway, getting back to this sucker. Here's the unit. And I guess you could say it's a really bizarre, really esoteric signal splitter. So when you think of a signal splitter, you probably think of one of those deals where it's maybe uh, three devices going in and then one out to the TV. And there's, you know, the little buttons on the front for one, two, and three. Well, instead of a a much simpler system like that, to me this seems kind of overanalyzed. But what this does is it shuffles around the stuff to different frequencies. And so it shuffles things to channels 70 through 83. I think the actual number is like 72 to 82, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, as I learned with this, uh, since I wanted to do a broadcasty thing, you know, really walk on the wild side with it, uh, I figured, well, you know, it's got the input for an antenna. Well, what I was totally unaware of is that no matter what the original channel is, it will remain that channel. So no reconfiguring happens here. So if the broadcast is on channel 14, it will remain on channel 14. And all this 70 to 83 stuff is totally irrelevant. So then it just became this endless game of, okay, how do I get it up into that particular zone. But um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I even by the standards of the time, I'm kind of scratching my head here. I, I think by the time these were introduced in 85, that they had already discontinued TVs with the original uh, frequencies for channels 70 through 83. 
and there would just be more practical ways of doing things, RF modulators, and, you know, there were already splitters and stuff by 85, so, um, yeah, maybe somebody smarter than I am can fill me in on the real proper point of one of these things, and, of course, composite video was becoming much more common, so to still be doing the old-school uh, coax, you know, standard cable TV coax stuff, it seems a little strange. But anyway, so let's get on to the big nasty test, which wound up being the single dumbest, biggest, most bloated, uh, jumping the shark kind of thing I've ever done. And I hope I never do again. So anyway, the segment is about seven and a half minutes, if memory serves. So in the name of keeping this video from getting too long, Let's just get right to it, and uh, if I forget anything, I will try and fill it in in text, and otherwise, uh, you know, in the comments, I'll try and respond. All right, here we go with the grand finale, the mother of all stupid Benny Boy setups, and I'm going to have to do this gorilla style, and I cannot use my studio lighting in this setup because... Uh, the levels, signal levels, are so low and my lights are so crappy, they cause enough interference that it cuts the signal out entirely. So I have the automatic gain control set to just do whatever it wants. I have a flashlight in hand and I'll, I'll try and get through this and uh, try and make some semblance of sense. So anyway, uh, I was able to get KLAK, if you will, to broadcast on the forbidden frequencies, but even that's a misnomer. So of course, uh, the star of this whole video is this Archer box, but you can't just, like, uh, say I did have an old TV that could do the original frequencies of channels 70 through 83. Just with an antenna, I wouldn't be able to pick it up as far as I know. But, uh, yeah, so we're stuck with a direct feed, so we're not even really broadcasting. As far as I know, nobody can pick this up, even though the FCC ruled this uh, not so good in 1987. I just don't see where it would interfere, and we're dealing with such horrible uh, signal levels in this room that at the best of times, I can't get much beyond the confines of the walls of this particular room, so I think we're okay to test for a few seconds. So anyway, let's see if I can make some sense of this. So uh, first and foremost, I, I'm actually not using my PVM today. I'm just using this little consumer CRT because I just want something with a built-in antenna. Well, as it turns out, I probably could have just used the PVM anyway because the antenna input on this thing is so poor that I had to go over to my everyday RCA VHS deck. So yeah, one more thing. So anyway, let me try and run this down on the receiving end of things. So uh, we're starting with my everyday RCA VHS deck, which is tuned to channel 69. I'll get back to the significance of that in a bit. That is running out to the Archer. And then the Archer is running to the tuner timer unit tied to my big nasty Umatic deck. Now, of course, this is old enough that everything is still screw terminals. So for the occasion, I had to use one of those video game switcher devices uh, because it has UHF and VHF output on it. So, and I still had to use uh, a matching transformer for the VHF stuff, but uh, everything is hooked up there, and we are tuned to channel 82 at the moment. Now, the Umatic deck to monitor on the TV is just running out composite to my little consumer CRT. But if we want to monitor anything, I have to put this sucker into record standby mode, if not just record mode. And I can only do that if 
there's a tape in the machine. Now this is just a blank, so I, I'm not sacrificing anything here. I could even record if I wanted to, but I just, I don't wish to. So anyway, record standby mode. And, oh hey, KLAK is on the air. Not actually showing anything per se, but uh, it's there. Now if I take the remote to the RCA here, it will show that we are on channel 69. And now we get on to the broadcasting side of things. So let me grab my flashlight again. So I have uh, KLAK especially dumbed down right now. And uh, my voice is starting to go here. Uh, we're just doing that parlor trick of running out of the VCR and I do have a tape in there. Uh, normally it would be channel three if I ran just straight out, but I have such a weak signal that if I want any stability at all with regards to this setup, certainly I have to run it through a channel modulator. And this is one meant for cable TV stuff. And uh, it, it does cable frequencies, but it doesn't do it easily. It's uh, far easier to just keep it in UHF mode and the highest it will go is channel 69 because this thing is from uh, probably the early mid 90s. So we're running out of now the channel modulator to the antenna booster. And I should note that the TV I'm using, it will pick stuff up with an antenna booster, but I only own this one and it's more valuable on the broadcast end of things right now. So anyway, uh, moving on from the booster, we've got the uh, tower, if you will. So that's the whole setup. So now I guess all there is to do is to start the show. And we'll just say that it's public domain theater right now. And it's my go-to color sound movie, Ega. Of course, uh, not any uh, exciting parts. Are there any exciting parts to this movie? Eh, I think so. So anyway, just to prove once and for all that we are indeed operating on channel 82, I've got the volume kind of cranked right now. So I'm going to change the channel to 81. And we still have sound but no picture. If I go down to 80, snowstorm. So 81, 82, and if I try and go into VHF mode, channel two, three, four, dead all around. So yes, proof positive that we are on channel 82. I got KLAK onto one of the forbidden frequencies. Mission accomplished in the dumbest, most roundabout way possible, but I did it. And I'm gonna leave it there, and before my voice completely goes on me, I better wrap it up. So that's it for this Ben's Junk. I'll talk to you again soon.